Okay, uh, hello everyone. So first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to present my results. So I want to thank organizers and uh, in person, uh, Dr. Curtis Bright for the invitation. Uh, so let me start my talk. Uh, so I will switch to... Okay, so can you... Can you see my slide, first slide? Yes, we can see them good. Okay, so um, hello everyone once again. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you how I cope to invert some cryptographic hash functions via Kubin Conquer. So first uh, brief outline of my talk are uh, 10, 10 items. First, I'm going to tell you about cryptographic hash functions, so just a brief introduction, then about uh, cryptographic hash function MD4, special constraints for this function, about SAT technology. So these four uh, first uh, items, the main, main introduction. Then I'm going to tell you how uh, special constraints for MD4 can be relaxed then about Kubin Conquer, and then mostly about my results. It should be noted that the first eight items were uh, presented uh, at Ichikai this year, at the conference Ichikai, and it was published in the corresponding paper. You can uh, see it on the slide. And uh, two last items are about MD5, and these results are just most recent, and at the moment they are unpublished. So first of all, about uh, cryptographic hash functions. Uh, it is such a function that has the following properties, five properties. First, it should map a um, message of arbitrary finite size to a hash of fixed size. Second, it should be easy to compute such function just for a fraction of second. Then uh, pre-image resistance for any given hash output of this function, it, it should be computationally feasible or almost impossible to find a um, uh, corresponding input or message. Second primitive resistance for any given message, it is almost impossible to find another message with the same hash. In collision resistance, um, it's extremely hard to find any two messages with the same hash. So this Real resistances respond to three types of attacks. And usually the most weak resistance for cryptographic hash function is the collision resistance. And the parameter resistance and second parameter resistance are quite hard for analysis. And it should be noted that the first two properties are obligatory. So at the moment of publication of uh, cryptographic hash function, usually all five uh, properties uh, hold, but so after some time, some of them can be compromised. So just um, a brief and sh a short ex example. For example, you, ha you have uh, corresponding messages and some cryptographic hash function, and there is a message input, and on the right side, there, is, there are hashes or outputs of this function. And it can be seen that just a slight um, modification on the input leads to completely different hash. So usually it is like that. So just a change of one bit from the large message should change the hash completely because so uh, such functions should mix everything in just a, some perfect way. Um, so and uh, regarding these resistances, for example, uh, second uh, so, so collision resistance is to find any two messages such that they have the same hash. A primitive resistance is to um, uh, imposs impossibility to find a message given a hash. So, just for example. And there are many applications of cryptographic hash functions, and they are just uh, in. Uh, modern digital world um, in almost all devices around us. 
just two small examples, just verifying integrity of messages and files. So, for example, before uh, sending some um, huge uh, message or file, uh, hash function from this um, message can be calculated and after transmission, and if the hashes are equal, then with a high probability, everything is okay. So, verifying the integrity. The second um, variant is widespread. Don't store, uh, don't store a password, for example, in the reading system as a clear text because so uh, some intruder can find this clear text and uh, steal your password. Instead, uh, usually a hash from password is stored. And even if the intruder finds this file with the hash, then and he or she uh, will not be able to find the password because so it is it, it should be then um pre-image resistance of this the corresponding uh, hash functions to overcome so let me show you uh so Marco Dungard's scheme uh construction it is the main uh, method of building collision resistance cryptographic hash functions um so the main idea is that and there is some uh, one-way compression function is that it uh, easily computes uh, output given an input, but so it is very hard to find an input given an output. So that is, that is one-way compression function. Uh, and here is a compression function denoted by F. First, some in, initial uh, vector is given to the uh, function and then it is mixed with some block message message so message uh, great okay, it can be just huge message is divided into blocks and then each block is given to this compression function so here it, it is mixed with the uh, some uh, constant input and message then output of this function is given once again to the same function uh, so um, and uh, so function f takes the result so far, combines it and produces an intermediate result, and then each block is mixed. And after the last block is uh, processed, so hash is calculated. So there are some techniques how to divide message into uh, blocks of similar size, but I will not go into details here. Just a brief scheme of this construction. And uh, so what about uh, MD4? MD4 it is one of the most well-known cryptographic hash function, which was proposed in 1990. It, it is based on Merkel downward uh, construction, like almost all other modern cryptographic hash function. And so given uh, 500 12 bit message, uh, it uh, produces one, 128 bit hash. So I'm talking here, uh, here about uh, the compression function. And usually, uh, uh, when someone uh, uh, tries to analyze the hash function, then it means that it, com the corresponding compression function is annoying because it is the most uh, important part. Uh, the most resistant part of this hash. So further, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell you about a um, uh, study on the compression function. Also. So, and uh, the corresponding compression function uh, um, produces hash by transforming data in four 32 bit registers. Here you can see them A, B, C, D. Um, and uh, Compression function works in 48 steps, and each step one register is updated. Uh, and uh, before the first step, ABCD are initialized with some constants. And these constants are known, and they are the same for any message. Um, and after the last step, this ABCD, these four registers, are in fact form uh, the corresponding hash. And on each step, uh, register is updated in such a way that its value is its new value is a, a mix of all registers 
part of the message and some known concepts. So here you can see how, how it is done. One step from before. Uh, for example, here one register is updated, uh, register A, uh, first by some nonlinear function real registers and when we registers are mixed then this uh addition over to um is for part of the message and constant and then on shifting is used so it's just a good mix of all data and uh just part of so, so the code of the uh mp4 is as follows so here are, um, on the, before the first step, A, B, C, B are initialized with constants. And as I already mentioned, they are the same for any message. Then for this function F, this is a non-linear function. Uh, here you can see how it is done. So it, it is all, almost the same like it was on the picture, just in the code. So uh, steps from one to four are shown. So here you can see for um, message uh, block number zero uh, is mixed with ABCD and register A is updated, then PCD, and so on. Uh, after 48 steps, each register is updated for 16 times. And finally, hash is a continuation of these four registers. I hope that uh, it is more or less clear briefly how it works. So I'm not giving all the details. Uh, so and so there is an example of uh, how hash can um, look like given some message. And in fact, uh, interesting feature of cryptographic hash functions is that uh, corresponding compression uh, function maps um, set of much larger size than the set to onto set of uh, much smaller size. So here, um, uh, to uh, to the power of five hundred twelve onto to, to the power of one hundred twenty eight. So there are uh, enormous number of parameters for any hash, but it doesn't mean that it is uh, easy to find it. So of course there are many of them, but so usually it is hard to find any. Uh, so in uh, yes, and hash is released in a fraction of seconds. So and it is constructed in such a way. So all of these steps, modifications, shifting, uh, calling, uh, they are done in such a way that uh, hash is produced um, very quickly. But so it is computationally impossible to find a message to the hash. So and uh, since 1995, MP4 is not collision resistance. I mean, so in this year, um, first two collisions for MP4 were presented. So, and so it took five years for cryptographers to find collisions. So it is not collision resistance, but it is still pretty much resistant. It means so it is still computationally feasible to convert MP4 to find the message given a hash. And so um, this talk is about uh, study of uh, this very property about the premature resistance of MD4. And it should be noted that despite the fact that uh, uh, it is quite old and many vulnerabilities are known, it is still used to compute the right derived hashes on Microsoft Windows. Because so, uh, once again, it is still premature resistant. So next, so let me tell you how uh, non, not not full, but so uh, uh, we we can uh, reduce uh, MD4 was inverted. So in 1998, um, German cryptographer Hans Wilhelm proposed the following constraints. So some constant word K, 32 bit word K is chosen, and then on 12 steps out of 48, uh, the corresponding registers are assigned to this constant. So for any hash, the number of parameters is reduced maybe even to zero. So it means that uh, when this constant is applied, the corresponding uh, system of operations might have no solutions. 
Uh, but in some cases, it, it has maybe one, two, three, four solutions, few of them. But uh, and if at least one image exists, then this fusion must be much simpler. So the corresponding problem is much simpler to solve if there is anything to find I mean, any solution. Uh, and um, using these constraints, uh, Hans Neverton in order to 32 step version without any um, specialized algorithms, without any subtle or anything like that, just pure, pure um, uh, uh, conventional algorithm it was quite fast. And uh, more interesting is that in 2007, 39 step and before was inverted by applying these constraints and applying that subsolar. So it is more interesting, and uh, let me tell you uh, how. Uh, but so, uh, nevertheless, so since 2007, the 40 step version still remains unbroken. So, and um, more precisely, uh, these studies aimed at filling this gap via such solving techniques. So, um, let me tell you about SAT. So the Boolean satisfiability problem is to determine if a given Boolean formula is satisfiable. So usually Boolean formula in conjunctive normal form is considered because of quite convenient, just a, a widely used format. And uh, Boolean formula is satisfiable if its variables can be replaced by values true or false, such way that the formula relates to true. And so Otherwise, if um, variables cannot be replaced by, by, by values uh, uh, such way that the word is true, then Boolean formula is unsatisfiable. So here is an example, uh, Boolean formula that consists of three clauses. So uh, it's formula in conjunctive normal form, uh, conjunction of clauses. So it means that uh, this, uh, this formula uh, should be true only if all clauses are true, because uh, there is an uh, ONT and uh, operator between them. And this formula is satisfiable, uh, for example, on a satisfying assignment true false when variables A, B have values true and false respectively. And here you can see, so this clause is satisfied, here's, here's, so all three clauses are satisfied, that means that F is satisfied as well. And SAT is a um, subfield of automated reasoning, uh, and automated reasoning is in turn a subfield of artificial intelligence. So, of course, SAT is not that famous like other, um, like, for example, machine learning, but so, nevertheless, SAT is very important because so many um, problems for, from different uh, domains uh, are successfully solved by SAT. For example, it is just widely used for hardware verification for um, to produce um, microelectronics. In a science, it is used, for example, for finding conventional designs, and uh, I usually use it for good analysis. And there are many other applications, of course. So, and uh, what is meant by um, reducing problem, uh, some problem from some domain uh, into SAT? Given some problem P, uh, Boolean formula F is constructed. So, I'm, I'm not going to detail how constructed, just uh, uh, some known techniques. It's constructed such that this formula is unsatisfiable. If and only if pairs doesn't have any solutions. But uh, if problem P has at least one solution, then F is satisfiable and is important from any satisfying assignment of F. The corresponding solution of P can be constructed and effectively constructed. For example, in that um, 2007 paper, um, is to invert 39 step MD4. Uh, uh, conjunctive normal um, uh, formula in, in CNF uh, was constructed such that uh, 512 its variables corresponded to a message, so bit 
uh, uh, one bit to one bit, and 128 variables corresponded to a hash, and there were um, several thousand additional variables which were needed to encode um, producing hash given a message. So in total, uh, yes, there were several thousand uh, variables, and by assigning values to uh, this the corresponding 128 hash variables, inversion problem is constructed. So where uh, this um, uh, none of other variables are known, and this sub instance should be hard to solve. But so from 29 steps, it can be done in by a simple solver. So and uh, just a few words about uh, main complete algorithms which I used to solve that instances. So um, the DKL algorithm was proposed in 1962. Um, so it does bit tracking uh, with the help of a uh, unit class rule. So just a simple rule if um, after some assignments of variables, um, all rigorous uh, in close are related to false, then um, the free ritual must be true. So it's unit close rule. And so it, it iterative application of unit close rule is in propagation. So fact detail uh, is a uh, quick tracking um, with this uh, unit propagation. So and it means that it is not just uh, brute force. So this in propagation might be uh, quite powerful. So uh, by assigning some variables, um, other variables I assign, assign and so on. So maybe here on the uh, slide on the picture you can see an example. So binary search tree is formed where nodes are variables and edges are um, possible values of variables. For example, here by red you can see that some contradictions uh, were found. And uh, by green you, uh, green um, leaf uh, you can see uh, that satisfying assignments found. I'm just briefly trying to explain it. CDCL, conflict driven close learning, is a complete self solving algorithm. And in fact, it is it might be considered as a non analogical extension of DPNL with memory. So it is very effective and a very powerful uh, algorithm. Uh, so in case of contradiction, the reason is found and back jumping is done. So in case of uh, DPL, back tracking is done. So after contradiction found, uh, algorithm uh, goes back on one level back and tries to uh, 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 do other steps, other poss possible steps. And but here in the cell, just to avoid um, uh, some some actions which which can be omitted, the jumping is done. And uh, moreover, to forbid the corresponding contradiction, conflict clause is formed. It's based on the font reason and added to the formal. So in such a way, memory is used. And these conflict clauses, they forbid possi possible um, uh, possible uh, assigning uh, of the uh, possible processing of the same uh, branch. And most modern effective complete solvers are based on CDCL. Uh, so it was the main part of the introduction. So let me tell you about uh, my results. So first, um, I'm going to tell you what relaxing the difference constraints. So uh, let me remind you that these uh, difference constraints are assigning uh, uh, registers and, and before 12 steps um, value of some k, what k, some constant k. And so in uh, 2007, in fact, um, not all but uh, 11 constraints out of 12 were used, all but one for step, step 12. So here you can see. Uh, uh, I don't know. The reason, so maybe they tried all 12 constraints, but they couldn't find any solution or something like that. But so, so they found solutions when turn constraints were uh, used for 39 steps. And after, uh, so since 2007, more combinations of 11 visiting light constraints have been proposed in several more uh, papers. And it was something about, so to exclude 
not to exclude different um, exclude some other uh, uh, constraints out of 12 or maybe even construct a uh, different combination of such constraints but so nevertheless uh, so I put the following idea um, algorithm one so go back to roots uh, just not to try to exclude the whole one who's trained according by the team first try to apply all 12 different constraints solve uh, the corresponding problem by some complete algorithm a so here problem can mm, can appear of course if no solutions are found it is possible in practice so it happens then uh, don't exclude one constraint exclude constraint for one last bit of the register on step 12 so it needs to leave constraint for 31 bits out of 32. So not in exclude the whole constraint, but just slightly try to relax it by uh, excluding constraint for one bit. So by the same complete algorithm A. In case the solution is found, so everything is the case, if not, try to exclude uh, constraint for two last bits. So just step by step, bit by bit, uh, relaxing one constraint, and so on until a solution is found. And here, okay, so just the algorithm, it is not connected uh, with a sub because so algorithm A can be just any uh, complete algorithm uh, effective enough for this problem. And the main question, what to use as the algorithm A? And uh, so, okay, so I tried CBCL, but it was not enough. CBCL was not powerful enough. Um, and uh, that is why to uh, mm, process this iteration. So, for example, A, I decided to use Clean Conquer. So, what is it? So, I'm going to uh, tell you just a um, little bit more introduction. Uh, Clean Conquer is his approach for solving hard set instances where CBCL is not enough. Uh, and it, there are two phases on fitting phase. Um, this algorithm splits uh, problem into sub problems while look ahead. So look ahead, solvers in the context of SAT, another one extension of the PLL. Uh, without, so no memory is used, never side to CBCL, but so in uh look ahead uh branching query is uh chosen more precisely according to some techniques so it's estimated how uh, assigning uh, different variables um uh, modify the cnf the goal is to simplify the cnf um uh, as much as possible and moreover there is some additional reasoning that is uh, called uh, fail to elimination. So uh, just simply some leaves um, are refuted by unit propagation. So it means so in the course of uh, work of root head, it can refu uh, refuse some um, some unneeded branches. So so it means that it uh, simplifies the given problem. But so some of them for some branches it cannot refute um, anything and that is why they are cut off so cut off uh, happens when the number of variables in the subproblem drops below the threshold it means that so um the corresponding uh the corresponding uh leaves are saved and all of, all of them form so-called crude cubes so it's a partial assignment. For example, here you can see x4 true, x7 false, x3 false. Uh, it's partial assignment. It and it forms or it forms a cube. And by uh, adding this cube to a CNF, a simplified uh, formula is constructed that might be uh, simple enough for a solver. And then after all cubes are produced, they are solved by the cell solver. So in fact, yes, so after all final step, again, the cell is used, but so only to solve 
simplify problems. And um, very interesting thing that all the cubes can be processed independently. That is why uh, this cubing concord is ideal for parallelization. So next step, so okay, so I um, uh, propose this algorithm one and you know, I decided to solve the corresponding inversion problems on iteration of algorithm one by cubing concord. So next uh, problem that I, that I faced is to how exactly to solve the corresponding problems because so, um, there are some parameters for cubing concord and the main of them is uh, finding is cut off threshold. So let me remind you that that all happens when the number of variables in the subproblem drop below the all given threshold. So this threshold um, is extremely important. So a proper threshold uh, uh, can can help one to solve the problem easily. But so how to find it? It's the question. And so uh, I proposed algorithm two for finding cutoff threshold and just briefly with um, given precise values of parameters, of course, and paper of this and the proper pseudo code. Uh, so, first step promising cutoff thresholds are chosen. How they are chosen? Promising so at least 500 refuted leaves should be pro uh, produced and at most 1 million cubes. So, um, 500 of these leaves, so it means that uh, uh, this uh, threshold sh should uh, simplify the problem enough. So when repeated leaves appear, then it, it, it means that so some simplification happens and so some parts of the problems are already uh, refuted, so it becomes simpler. And at most one million cubes, because so uh, there are too many cubes, I, mean, I don't know, millions of millions of them, and even if they are extremely simple it, it can be hard to solve all, all, all of them and starting from the highest promising threshold that is the simplest problem it means that so um, then uh, the corresponding sub problems are formulas on this um, low number low number of variables and um, starting from the highest promising threshold a random sample of one Thousand cubes is formed, and the sub problems are solved to ask the self solver with time limit of 5,000 seconds. This time limit was chosen because so it is the usual time limit for such competitions. Um, and then, if all sub problems in the sample are solved, then runtime estimation for threshold is calculated. How? Just an average runtime on sub problems of sample is multiplied. By now, a whole number of uh, cubes, of course. So it's quite quite simple thing. Otherwise, if on at least one uh, sub problem from the sample, um, so the cell solver couldn't solve uh, solve the, the problem in, in time limit, then stop and go to step four. And step four, return a threshold with the best estimation if any are known otherwise. It means that if for any uh, promising threshold. All problems are problems from the sample were solved successfully in time limit, then um, time estimation was calculated. But if for all of them it wasn't done, then unknown is just the only possible answer because so it can, cannot be decided what to choose. And it should be noted that so the, the found threshold. Is chosen for solving all the remaining cubes, so it's, it's quite natural because so the finding found best threshold is that the threshold with the best runtime estimation. We can estimate how hard is the given substance, and so this threshold is chosen for solving all the remaining cubes. And it should be noted that a similar idea was used in paper published by Dr. Curtis Bright with his uh, colleagues in 2021. Uh, but so it, uh, in my paper, I uh, described it in the form of uh, sort of code. And so I emphasize this uh, uh, crucial thing regarding uh, um, time limit of 5,000 seconds or just any time limit that Estimation can be done only if all um, sub problems are processed. So, 
So uh, finally, uh, okay, so I proposed a version one and uh, I decided to use Kubernetes Conquer. And while the version two, I, I can find a uh, proper threshold with the best runtime estimation for given set of instances. So, and how I used both these algorithms. So, I did experiments just on one personal computer equipped with a 12 core CPU. So, so I, I didn't use any supercomputer because I don't have any access to it. So, um, so the, the rest, these resources are quite modest, of course. And for uh, 40, 41, 42, and 43 steps before, I considered uh, four hashes. So you can see them first, all zeros, 128 zeros, all ones, then um, another hash from paper 10, this uh, was published in 2012, um, and it was used to build 28 steps and five. To, so and the first one is just a uh, random random hash. So and in fact, so I considered uh, sixteen inversion problems. So for four hashes and four different um, in reductions of uh, MD four. And finally, I I coped with all of them while the proposed algorithm one or algorithm two. Uh, so algorithm one worked on the on the top, and so it called algorithm two that uh, found a corresponding threshold. And finally, uh, this threshold was used to solve the cubes. And at least sixteen hours um, were needed for the simplest problem, and at most ten days. Ten days for the hardest one. So it's quite something. Was uh, and. It, it is very interesting that at least one iteration of algorithm one uh, was used. I mean, so for some problems, for some inertia problems, just uh, applying all 12 degrees constraints, and I mentioned this um, coming, uh, uh, so going back to roots. So in some cases, all uh, 12 degrees constraints were enough, and the corresponding problem. Uh, have solution, but in some of them, in for some regression problems, uh, iteration, additional iterations of algorithm one were needed. And the interesting that at most three iteration, iterations were needed, it means that uh, the constraint for the last two bits was excluded in the worst case. So it means that these degree constraints uh, usually make a system that either has a uh, few solutions, or it, it doesn't have any solution, but it is somehow somewhat close to having solutions. And by just slight modification, it turns into a system of equation that has few solutions. So it works. So an average, so also quite interesting, on average, the real time is only 18% higher than the estimated time. It means that this algorithm, proposed algorithm two, can be used to um, uh, estimate hardness of sub instances um, and to decide whether it can be solved in a reasonable time or not. So, here on the slide, you can see uh, found images for two hashes out of four, just, just to, um, uh, just for example. And interesting thing that, so as I already mentioned, um, Given a message, a hash can be produced in a fraction of a second, and so uh, anybody can uh, can check that these images are correct. But so they, it was quite hard to find them. But so <laughs> um, the corresponding hashes can be uh, can be produced in a fraction of a second, so it's quite easy to check. So and finally, I'm going to tell you about MD5 and some recent results. So MD5 was proposed in 1992 as a slightly slower but much more secure extension of MD4 because so some vulnerabilities were found uh, in MD4 at the time. So and uh, risk effect um, fixed them. So the, the main changes compared to MD4 as false. 
16 more steps were added. Uh, unique additive constraints in each steps were used in other side of website of in the website to MD4, where only uh, uh, unique additive const constants um, were used in each block of 16 steps. And the third uh, change addition of output from the previous step in each of the 64 steps. So this MD4, uh, MD5 uh, function is much, much more secure. And since 2005, it is not collision resistant. So compared to MD4, for MD4, it was uh, for cryptographers, five years we are needed to find collisions. In case of MD5, uh, 13, uh, 13 years we are needed to find collisions. So, uh, and, and it must be, uh, it should be not that the routine like constraints are not effective for MD5 because of the, these changes and they make it um, resistant to the routine like constraints. In 2012, 28 step of D5 was inverted twice to the cell soil without any additional constraints. So in the last last item. So in that paper in 2012, MD5, 28 step and D5 was inverted for only one hash. You can see on the slide. For some reason, they uh, didn't do it for uh, all zeros, all, all ones, usually these two hashes are considered as uh, hashes to invert because so they have quite a regular structure. Um, and so I decided to use algorithm two in slightly modified form as an incomplete solver, write it at some instances with many satisfying assignments. So I decided to invert in 28 step and 5 for, for several more hashes. So uh, algorithm three is incomplete self-solving algorithm, it's modification of algorithm two. So first uh, step is the same, second is the same, the third is different. So uh, if the design assignment is found, just when solving any subproblem for any random sample, then stop and go to step four. So uh, this is because uh, this any second time assignment is uh, enough uh, and nothing else should be done in this case. And in step four, uh, it then start with second time assignment one that found and unknown otherwise. So and uh, in other side to algorithm two, uh, it, it is not forbidden to uh, um, to interrupt CD cell solvers, uh, you know, when it reaches a time limit. So, um, if just uh, so, uh, almost all uh, sub problems for from random sample can can be not solved, but so at, at least at least one of them is enough uh, when it is solved. I mean, time assignment is found. So uh, I decided to compare uh, implementation of algorithm, algorithm three with the, the winner of the prior track of set competition uh, 2022. It is Parkisat RS, and it should be noted that both Parkisat and my algorithm three are based on the same set cell solar Kisat. So it's a more than uh, uh, cell solar. And I use the same personal computer will low clock time limit of five hours. And uh, as you can see, so uh, algorithm three uh, successfully um, coped with all four instances. So here you can see four hashes, random hash, all zeros, all ones, and hash by um, gender uh, from the paper from 2012. Parkisat uh, coped with only three uh, instances, so it couldn't solve instance for random hash. And um, more so in three instances out of um, four algorithm three, as um, algorithm three did it did it faster than than the competitor. So it doesn't mean that so this algorithm three is the only readable thing. It means that if 
someone tries to uh, study the corresponding so similar um, uh, problems when such instances for sure have many, many solutions, then uh, besides well-known uh, the standard spoiler solvers, it makes sense to try with specialized algorithm like the one I proposed algorithm for it. Because so it is it, it also general, it is not um, uh, domain specific for cryptographic uh, hash function. So just to conclude, uh, I proposed three algorithms. The first one relaxes the difference constraint constraints until the inversion problem is solved. The second algorithm is a general one and it finds at all threshold, giving phase of the conquer with the best runtime estimation. The third algorithm is an incomplete solving question of the second one. So the main result is a successful inversion of 40, 41, 42, and 43 step and D4, while previously it was done on the plus 49 step. Um, and a 38 step and D4 was inverted for four hashes, while previously it was done only for one of them. And should be noted that the algorithm can be used, as I already mentioned, yes, so for other such instances with many satisfying assignments. So thank you for your attention. Uh, any questions? All right, thank you, Oleg. Let's uh, thank, let's thank the speaker.